Okay, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to another day. Excited to be with you again today. Thank you all those for the emails and the the text. Um, I appreciate it. It's nice to see everybody. Um, and one of the questions that I got yesterday while we're really delving together into this topic of rituals, we've been spending a lot of time, for those that are joining us now for the first time, thank you for those that are coming back. We appreciate it. We're spending a lot of time in the world of rituals and we do it because otherwise, how else are we going to grow? Like, it's nice to talk, but if we really want to make a huge difference in our lives, that difference is going to come from changing our brains. And when we change our brains, then our bodies will follow naturally. And so one of the reasons why we're so focused on rituals and vision is because if we don't really hit it out of, in a very specific way and hit it from every angle until it's super clear, we're really going to be putting ourselves at a disadvantage for actually changing our lives. Round and round we go. And we need a lot of motivation in life. As Zig Ziglar says, as I said earlier, it's like showering. It's so important. You should do it every day. But it doesn't really take us anywhere. The emotion of motivation doesn't really take us to the goal line. What takes us there is the, the reformatting of our minds. We look at the world with new lenses. And when you change your rituals, you start changing your mind. And when you change your mind, it impacts everything else. We're going to start moving next week into the world of schema, into the world of perspective, which will change our feelings. But before we do that, I want to pause for a second. Because some of the questions that I've been getting are really great. And for those that are sending them, thank you. Um, and I guess there's a theme to many of them, which is the process feels, feels unidimensional. It feels like you can only work on one thing at a time. It feels like you have to slow down your whole life and like operate on a snail's pace. Which one do you choose? You have an ideal day. Well, what part of the day are you, is it a Monday? Is it a Sunday? Is it a Shabbat? Is it a Saturday? Like what, it, what is the day? Is it a family day? Like there's, we're so, we're multi-dimensional. And how do we move forward? on the different dimensions of our lives. So I want to tell you a story. I don't know if I, I don't think I said it here before. Years ago, I remember being on an airplane without a mask. And it was one of those mornings where you ever, you ever take a flight, like a 6 a.m. flight from like LaGuardia down to, I was going to Miami, small little plane. You know, those planes were like, you know, it's two and two, the seats. So I got on the plane and there's like half the plane is full. And you get that sense, you know, that sense that you get where like you're on an airplane and you like, so look around and you see that like the plane's only half full and like this, the line coming into the plane is like thinning out. And like, you sort of like get this sense of like, oh my gosh, I may not have anyone sitting next to me. Like the greatest gift God could give us is like nobody sitting next to me on an airplane. It's like, we feel like we just, we feel like someone just gave us like a million dollars. Like I can go, I can fly down somewhere and have nobody next to me. Like this is the greatest gift in the world. Yeah, it's that feeling you get, that excitement. And you start looking around to seeing like who's coming. You start like calculating, oh, there's 12 open seats. There's three people, like there's no chance. So that was happening to me. And I was like, so excited. And the, they're about to clone the, close the plane doors and like one more passenger gets on. And he's like right out of central casting, like an older man. He must've been, you know, I don't know, maybe mid seventies, big white head of hair. I think he was wearing a velour jumpsuit top to bottom, you know, when you're in all velour, like there's no middle in velour, right? Either you're like killing it or you just broke out of a home. Like there's no, there's no middle ground to velour. And he comes on and like, he's a little like still inappropriate. You know, that guy he's like making comments to the stewardess and they're all like rolling their eyes. And he ends up sitting next to me, of course. And we start talking and he's totally like, you know, you know, like the, there's like a certain like etiquette that 
you're supposed to have on the plane. Like you don't know the person, like it's two questions that you usually get two rounds. How are you? What's going on? Weather, if there's trap, if there's any, any delays, but you don't get personal with the stranger next to you on a plane, but he doesn't have any rules. So he's asking me this about my family. Where am I going? And finally I turned to him and I said, so where are you going? So he says, I'm going down to a conference. I said, a conference for what? He says, a conference for coaches. I'm like, you're a coach? He goes, yeah. I'm like, what, what do you coach? Like elementary school basketball? So he's like, no, I coach division one basketball. I'm like, you, you coach NCAA division one? He's like, yeah. I'm like, what school? So he said, it's like a school that never makes a tournament, but I don't care. It's division one basketball. So we're talking back and forth for a long time. This is a much, much longer story, not for now. And I said to him, he says to me, I got a kid that just came in my system that I think can go all the way. I said, really? How do you know? So he goes, because he mastered the hardest move in basketball. I said, what's the hardest move in basketball? He goes, oh, that's easy. I'm like, I know, the fadeaway jump shot. He goes, no. I'm like, what's the hardest move in basketball? He goes, the hardest move in basketball is the crossover. For those who don't play basketball, when you're playing the game, part of the game is getting away from the guy in front of you. And there's a move where you go one direction and then you cross over to another direction. And if you do it right, the guy in front of you thinks you're going left when you're really going right. I said, how is it the hardest move? Why is it that, that we have a hard time with the multiple aspects of our lives? So it comes down to that conversation with this man. This guy on, 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 the, on, on this plane talking basketball is the insight that we need to understanding why when we live in a world of so many things, it's hard to put it together. Now, if you remember, we spoke about this idea of our minds and one of the aspects of our minds is that it's neuroplastic, but there's another aspect of our minds and that our minds are very much limited in what they can take in. Our brains can't take in too much information because if they could, if the brain took in too much, we would literally melt. Not literally, we'd figuratively melt. If we were to be walking around and everything that's going on in the world, all the stimuli in the world would hit our brain at the exact same time. If the sounds of every car, if you'd walk into the supermarket and you'd hear every cereal box and every squeaky wheel and every person on the phone, if all of it would come into your mind at one point, the flood of stimuli would shut us down. So what our brain does is our brain actually only focuses on very few things. And we'll talk about that next week. It's called the schema. But to set it up now, our brain can only take in a very small window of stimuli because if it took in too much, we would be not, we'd doing nothing else but sort of, it would be a flood. It's like you have a little cup and someone doesn't pour. They open up like a dam. It just floods all the way in. And so what our brain does all the time is get ri gets rid of stimuli. And it only gives you a small little window of things to focus on. We have about 120 to 150 bits of information per second. We can't take in more than that. And all we really have is the ability to focus this little window of attention. That's all we got. We'll explain why, but that's all we got is a window. And if we focus that window on anything, that's what we get every single second. So if you're sitting here right now listening and all you're focused on is this, this show and me, then you're getting all of this. And if you're focusing on this and doing emails, you're getting half of this and half of emails. You don't get more than the box. You get 100, let's say, units of, inf of, of attention per second. You just choose how you want to spend them. Some people will spend those units on one thing and all the attention is there. Some people spend those units on 10 things. They'll be on the phone, they'll be tapping the emails, they'll be scrolling through the phone, and they'll be cooking, and they'll be watching something else. And with all they're doing, they're not really doing more. What they're doing is they're just spreading the same amount of attention to, to multiple things. The greatest path to mediocrity in your life, 
and in my life is multitasking. Multitasking is a 100% myth. It became popular with people on television because it's cooler to watch somebody who's a business guy talk on two cell phones while directing somebody selling stock and ordering dinner for the family. That's like a, a fun thing to watch. We assume that when we multitask, now sometimes we have no choice. Sometimes you're in the kitchen and you're cooking and the kids are going crazy. Okay, sometimes you're at work and you're, and you're multi, fine. Sometimes you have no choice but to multitask. But in truth, multitasking, all it does is split up your attention. It doesn't give you more. It just gives you more in quantity. I remember one time going to uh, an event once. I'll never forget this. And I, and it was like, the food was like coming off the ceilings. I've never in my life seen, I've never seen that. It, you can't even believe like everywhere you go were platters and trays and food. And I'll never forget. I was talking to a friend of mine who was a caterer. And I'm like, what did this cost? And he told me the price. And I was like, that doesn't sound like, it. look at this. He goes, yeah, they have a lot more food. He goes, but there's nothing here of any real quality. He goes, it looks like there's a lot, but there's no, there's nothing here that's really a quality. So it's just stuff. We live in a world where we're being flooded with so much stuff. There's no quality. That's why if you speak to somebody, honestly, and you go through three rounds of their opinion, usually, unless this is what they do for a living, they don't really know. Ask somebody why four times to any opinion they have. When you're sitting around a table with somebody and they're like opinionated, go four or five real why and then why and how does that work? Lots of people, not everybody, lots of people. They can't, it's because there's so much stuff coming at us that it's almost impossible to be deep in anything. So we settle for breath. We set off a quantity. And if at the end of the day, I could check my this and do my this and go, the more I'm like getting busy with, the more I think I'm being productive. We make the mistake in thinking that being busy is being productive. We multitask. When you live in the world of multitasking, that's when you want everything immediately because you, you can almost taste everything. Like you have like a, a little bit of everything but you don't have anything for real. So what do great people do? They also have a lot of things going on. So this is the conversation I had with uh, my friend on the plane. He said, the reason why the crossover is the hardest move is because in order to do it well, you have to really believe it. If you, if you cross over, not real, if you're not really going left or right, the defender's like, what are you doing? The way you really fake out a defender is every aspect of your body needs to be going left. Everything, your brains, your mind, everything. And then you need to believe and know in your heart that even though you're going left on a dime, you can go totally right. I learned this from my grandfather. We'll talk about him also, my Holocaust surviving grandfather. He taught me this, how to be in the middle of a Holocaust story that is the scariest, craziest thing you've ever heard. And then in a second, be on the floor playing Lego with your great-grandson. In a split second. I learned this from Israel. Being in the remembrance that Yom HaZikaron in tears. And then in a split second, you're in Yom HaTzmod, Independence Day, and you're partying. This is one of the greatest, most difficult skills that we have in our lives. It's called the crossover. We'll hit this more than once. This is one of those great skills that if we practice, we become so much greater. The skill is to say, wherever I am, that's where I am. In the business world, they call it switch tasking, not multitasking. Multitasking is you flood your mind with multiple things at once. You're on the phone take in, and you're writing an email. The phone call you're missing because you're not really hearing what the person's saying and you're writing an email. You ever see two people sitting in a restaurant together? This has like become cliche. Friends, family, like this the whole time. So it's not like, it's not like the worst thing in the world. They're not like yelling at each other. It's because, but, but what they don't get is that when they, when, when they need stimuli, 
which is why they look down. If they would just look at the person talking to them and they would suck in everything that they're saying, their facial expressions, what they mean, they would the depth of the relationship that they would get created would be so much more enjoyable than the breath of I'm talking, I'm eating, I'm scrolling. Yeah, what were you saying? And then the whole thing goes. But like everything in life, depth is subtle and, and enjoyable at a deep level. And breath is quick, right? My, the microwave tastes better, is quicker and it tastes better for 10 seconds. It's harder to cook something for a while. It's harder to have a relationship that's deep because the joy is subtle and it takes time. But that's really where the greatness comes in from. Do you want to know how we can do multiple things a day? Is when you do everything, when you're all into everything that you're doing when you do it. We can do multiple things a day. We can do lots of things a day. But we can't do them all at the same time. The way you have multiple rituals during your day to hit multiple parts of your life is when you train yourself to be all in wherever you are. That means if you have 15 minutes to be with your family in between conference calls and you sit there with your kid on the floor, all you have in your life for those 15 minutes is that child. That's it. You're playing figurines and living in la la land with that kid and if that means that all you have is 20 minutes to pray or 30 minutes to prepare for something or if you're writing emails or if you're if you're on instagram then you have this amount of time a day and all you are is an instagram and you're just living in the sea of Instagram, but you know that a dime, whenever the time is up in your mind and the phone call comes in or the next thing has to happen, you're all here. Much of what we miss in life is a couple of feet beneath the surface. Much of the depth that relationships are lacking, it's not that people don't live next to each other. How do you have people living in the same house for 20 years and they don't get along? How's that even possible? It's because there, there could be issues. Let's leave issues out. There are issues, personality issues. I got it. There's dynamics. Not every family can be explained in one way. But there's a segment of relationships that never developed because whenever people were in relationship mode, they were meeting, breakfast, lunch, dinner, vacation, they were never fully there. They never fully understood the other person. They weren't fully invested. And I don't mean that if someone doesn't have a good relationship, this is the reason for it. I'm arguing in the, in, in the inverse, not the reverse. So when we think about our daily rituals every day, we can have multiple things to do every day. If we're supposed to. And as you plan your daily rituals every day, and as you draw from your ideal day, my guess is if you have an ideal day, you'll be doing mostly multiple things. Maybe you'll do one thing for most of your day, but you'll have multiple things in your day. Understand that the only way you can be successful at that is if when you're doing your ritual, every fiber of that limited scope called your brain, your schema, that limited amount of attention that you have, every single iota of that attention, all of it, is in that ritual. And if you can't do it for 20 minutes, because you can't hold that long, do it for five minutes. But quality is always greater than quantity. And when we start to see what life looks like in quality, even if it's a brief amount of quality, once you taste food that's quality, when you taste quantity-based food, you're like, I can't eat this. When you taste someone who actually, when you taste like home cooking, so to speak, and then you compare it to like, fast food or things in boxes that sat on shelves in grocery stores for like months. You're like, this doesn't even taste like the same thing at all. But we have to train ourselves to switch tasks more, to cross over better, to live wherever we are. And when we can start to understand this concept, you can start to see how you can have multiple rituals throughout your day and you can learn how to cross over and 
the crossing over allows you to be all in and then the dime all in and then the dime all in. And each time, wherever you are, you're gaining so much more depth than you would have gotten doing everything at the same time. That's the feeling of being productive versus being busy. We'll talk about this. Those who, 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 who still want um, the workbook, if you haven't reached out, please do Charlie or Charlie Rari, happy to send it to you. And looking forward to uh, continuing this. This is, uh, this is exciting stuff. And um, I hope we get to, to do it together. Thanks so much for uh, being here today. And with God's help, I can't wait to speak to you tomorrow. Have a great day.